Hey YouTube. Hey, I got one more little video I wanted to put in here today and it's, uh, I don't really know what to call it. I call it hunt prepping my bow. So you can call it whatever you want. So there's a few things that I've done or I've learned in the past that I can do to quieten up my bow and then have extra parts. Well, I call them parts, uh, serving shred, D-loop material, things like that that's going to help you if you ever have an emergency. If you're like a lot of us guys, we hunt a lot of public land and we go out of state, um, we bring the necessities with us in our pack. But I have literally sat on the ground in a ground blind and have a limb saw trying to cut crap out of my way and hit my bowstring. And, oh, there, there's a nightmare right there, right? So um, just some things that I keep with me. Uh, I wanted to go over with you guys. First of all, the first most important thing that I got, it's cheap, is this Bowmaster, right? A lot of people will be like, oh, don't use a Bowmaster. No, it's not good for the bow. If you get a Bowmaster and you use it correctly, it, I've, I've used it on my V327, on my VXR28. I've used it on my Traverse. Um, I think it's 33 or 34 inches. I got a Bowtech Revolt. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a Revolt. Uh, Reckoning. It's like a 34-inch bow. I've used it on every bow, and they work great. I mean, I wouldn't try to swap cam bearings or nothing like that, but or shim your cam. But if you just need to get your string loose where you can fix your D-loop, I mean, not your D-loop, but your uh, peep side, or if you need to fix your QAD or something like that, that they, they work great. Uh, always keep that in my backpack um, when I'm out of town hunting. If I'm at home, I just go to my shop, and I got a bow shop. I use my press, right? So, uh what i like to do um because you don't want to carry serving in your pocket you're just going to lose it um i always take and i put some serving on one of my cables right here that's about an inch of serving right real easy to get off if i have an issue with one of my uh peeps or something i can unravel this i got lighters in my pocket or whatever i can reserve whatever i need to do um Another thing that I like to do is uh, I'm using a limb driven this year. So I have all of this extra cord in case I have a D loop problem, right? If I have a D loop problem, if it breaks, I can cut some of this off. I can use it, make a D loop while I'm in the tree, on the ground, wherever I'm at, I'm good to go. Now, obviously, if you don't have your D loop pliers, you're not gonna be able to pull it super tight, but I promise you, you can get it tight enough you can get a, uh, a a green stick or, or an arrow, the end of an arrow like this. I've had to do it many times in the past when I was hunting. When I had a bad D-loop or it looked like I was going to break it, I'd get my arrow in there like this, and you can pull it tight like that. Yeah, as long as you learn to tie a D-loop, you'll be golden. Um, Limb-driven rest. I know that a lot of guys are hooking them. Matthews is even making a a thing that you can put on right here right now and put your limb driven cable on there a lot of people are putting them in here um but that when you take a limb driven rest it's going to hold your arrow the further back you have it here the longer it's going to hold your arrow however the further back you have it here is the louder it's going to get um in another video i'll actually tie one on back here and shoot the bow and let you hear it compared to up here uh if you'll take that rest if you'll take your cord and you'll slide it forward until your until your arrow is about halfway back, your well tail will come all the way up when your arrow is about halfway back. It'll give you all the support you need in the world and it will be stone cold quiet. As quiet as any QAD or any other rest you can get. As quiet as a whisker biscuit. But you need to play with your timing on it. You need to move this forward. You want to make sure that your well tail comes all the way up what i like to do is i use a purse at night so i'll take this off let my well tail come all the way up like that i'll take a little pin or a little marker mark it right there on the side and then put put it back down once it's down i'll draw it back till, and then i can see when i got it all the way up right and at that point as soon as i can as the further that i can get this string here draw my arrow back and have my well tail come all the way up the quieter it's going to be if you guys uh want to just give that a try
can't hurt anything, right? See what it does. Uh, I used to, I wouldn't shoot a limb driven for years because of the noise. I'm in the South Arkansas. Our deer are tiny. Uh, they can hear a fly fart, and they can be out of sight in a split second. They are quick. Um, so I like that. Another good another thing I like to do is I always tie a, a little cat whisker right on there. Um, that helps out a lot. And then this is you can see where my cord broke the other day. So I I had to uh, I had to replace my cord and I didn't have one long enough, so I tied a knot in it. But this little thing right here, I made it out of rubber. Uh, I seen where they were selling them on TV. Now um, I think I seen them on Elk Shape, or uh, where they were selling those. Well, they work great. I still keep my spring on there. I like the spring. Um, but I put that on there. That thing is stone cold quiet now. Um, another thing uh, that I did, I like to do is I wrap all of my bars. Uh, it helps with vibration, every one of them. Uh, my back bars, I wrap all of them with tape, uh, grip tape. It really helps take the vibration out of it. Um, it works great for me, especially on the, I like to shoot a long bar on the front. You get a lot of vibration with those. The more weight you put on, the more they vibrate. Uh, wrap that sucker up with grip tape. It'll take a lot of that vibration out of there. Not to mention, most of them are shiny and the grip tape, uh, you can get it real nice and dull. Uh, helps take away that shine. Um, another thing I do is I always put a rubber coating under my sight right here. So if, when you're setting up in the, in the stand, I have a rubber coating there. I have a rubber coating here and I usually have one right there, but I just swapped bows the other day from the V327 to back to my VXR. I, I think this bow shoots better and I, I didn't take it off. I'm just gonna go get another one. But when you're sitting in the stand and your arrow moves around, it can hit on the bottom of your sight right there. No noise. It can hit against your, uh, your bow, your riser, no noise. Uh, really helps out. I've set up in the stand a lot of times. I usually don't hang my bow. It's usually sitting on my lap and I can move around. Even my belly will touch it or my shirt will catch my, my knock and it'll pop, ding, 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 and make a lot of noise. So uh, that's one thing I started doing. Um, the other thing is that I've done is some people might want to shoot me, but I have a Hoyt. <laughs> I have this Hoyt um, back bar on my Matthews bow. The reason why is I put it in that little screw right there. I hate the ones that they make right. I hate the standard ones that they make because they're just too heavy. I do not like the weight. Every time I put one on my, on my bow, I end up having problems trying to figure out my weight. I'm not saying it ain't in my head, but you can buy a Hoyt one and you can put it on any Matthews bow that's made since the, I think since the actual first verdicts it has that hole there for your uh it's not in it's not for anything it's just the way that the riders made you know, i use that um everything's quick to connect uh, that's really about it that's about all i do to uh hunt proof my bow and have it ready for the woods i don't know you guys can try some of that stuff out and see what you think it works good uh, and if you guys have anything that y'all are doing uh, that's been working for you let me know I'd like to try it out.